Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk to you about uh, things that you should be aware of as you're trying to apply uh, for colleges. That way that you can get into Texas A&M University. Now, there's no trick to it, um, to getting in, but I just have some things that you should keep in mind before you apply and, like, while you're applying. Uh, so the first thing is those SAT scores. Now, you really want your SAT scores to be as high as you can. If you're an engineer, try to shoot for, like, a 700 in math, high in reading as well. Now, it's not a big deal if they're not incredibly high. You can always go to a place um, to help with the test prep for SAT scores and, like, taking the SAT and giving you different tips on, oh, well, this is what you should do in this case or not. None of your friends have to know that you go get help on these. And really, like, even if they do find out, like, you're just trying to get better and it's for your future, so it's important. So definitely make sure that your SAT scores are high. Um, it's not the end-all, end-all. Um, but yeah, I would definitely make sure those are as high as you can get them. Also, if you are trying to get into like a private school. What private schools really like is that you sat, you took the SAT once or twice and you did really, 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 really good. Um, mm, don't know if that's true for your uh, public universities. Uh, the next thing that you need to have are activities. So, and not just activities, but longevity in activities, like say you were in band for four years, football for four years, theater for four years, choir for four years. Now it's not the end of the world if you don't stick with something for four years, but they do like to see longevity. On top of that, they really like leadership positions, like, oh, you were a drum major, you were captain of the football team, yada yada. Uh, again, not the end of the world, like if you don't have a lot of leadership positions, it's cool if you're like the treasurer of National Honor Society and stuff like that. Um, if you don't have a lot of leadership, I I recommend um, volunteering. I volunteered at our public library for two hours a week um, for the summer and two semesters. So that was like almost 100 hours of community service right there. And you can put that on your application. Also, if you got a job, uh, say you work at HEB or Walmart or whatever, or food places, uh, Pizza Hut, whatever, um, you have a job. So you can also put that as your activities as well. But they really like activities. It shows that you didn't just sit at home and watch TV or play your Xbox. It also shows that you can multitask and deal with lots of different things at once, not just school and not just studying. The next thing I want to talk about are those essays that are on the Apply Texas. Um, I can't remember what my essay topics were. I think one was like a person who you influenced and the other was like... Um, some kind of topic that's like important to you or whatever but just make sure that you don't have faster essays make sure that you edit them you don't have any grammar mistakes make sure you actually write about the prompt like I know that sounds stupid but make sure you're following that and also make sure you do the optional SAC if you are borderline top 10% which I'll talk about in a second but for the optional SAC they're looking for like hardships in different circumstances this doesn't include your parents getting divorced because unfortunately the divorce rate is at like 50%. So basically 50% of the applicants could write about that. What Really what they're looking for is, you know, your mom or dad had cancer and so you had to spend a lot of time in the hospital so you didn't study as much or you were about to lose, your family was about to lose your house and so you had to go get a job so therefore you couldn't study as much. They're just looking for different hardships like that. Um, you definitely can't lie on your application, so if you don't have anything to write about for this optional SAC, like, I would just consider yourself lucky. Um, so that's, it's not an incredibly big deal. Um, as far as the top 10%, what does that mean? Well, it means that if you're in the top 10% of your class, you're guaranteed admissions, I believe, into the public schools in Texas. A&M for sure. I don't know if TU has up to theirs to 8 or 6%. I, I don't know about that. Um, so it guarantees your admission, but what it does not guarantee is your major. Uh, I don't know if ADIM does general studies or any anymore, but like, yeah, you could get in, but you may not get the major you want, and that's a major setback. Uh -huh, no pun intended. Um, but if you are applying and for engineering, uh, you want to make sure that you have engineering 
like, if your first choice is chemical, you want to make sure your second choice is also, like, within the engineering department. Um, so that's, that's the dealio with the top 10%, which I didn't realize until someone explained it to me, and I was like, oh, okay. Um, so that leads me to my second, my, my last, I think my last, yeah, my last point, um, is that you need to apply early, because a and well, at least when I applied, was doing rolling admission, and basically what that means is, as people apply, they start accepting people, and they accept, they accept people before that deadline, December 1st. So they don't take all the applicants, look at them as a whole, and then decide who do we want. As they're coming in, they decide, oh, cool, yeah, we want you. Um, you know, and I got my acceptance letter, like, September 1st that I was in. Um, so I would definitely say apply, apply early because of this rolling uh, admissions thing. Also, if you're in engineering, it's incredibly important to apply early. I went to a presentation on the biomedical engineering department uh, my junior year before I was looking to apply and um, the guy who was in charge uh, basically said we fill our department which is which they only accept 150 students freshmen per year and they already filled the whole program by Halloween people and the deadline is December 1st I believe so their program was already filled, and so that becomes a problem when you wait till the last minute and apply before September 1st, and you want to be a biomedical engineer, well, oops, sorry, like, it's already full, so we're going to have to give you a second choice. And so that's why, also, you don't want to have your second choice as math or physics or something like that, because you're going to get a year behind because you're not going to sign up for those um, freshman engineering classes. Um, so basically, you really, really... If anything you take away from what I say today is you want to make sure that you apply early. Uh, I believe Apply Texas opens up sometime in August. You want to make sure that your application is in by probably the end of September. It's not the end of the world if that doesn't happen, but it really helps with your chances of getting the major you want. And not necessarily like for engineering, but for business and other, you know, departments as well. Um, so, yeah, and then hopefully you're on your way to being... And Aggie. Now, like, I can't say whether or not, like, you're going to get in or not. I'm not admissions, but I just wanted to make this video because I wanted um, to just let you be aware of some of the things that you should keep in mind, like, as you're applying. And I definitely love my school. It's been the best decision I've made. And these were all things that I took, um, you know, to get in. Um, so I hope you find um, this video helpful. Um, please comment if you have any questions or concerns about yourself or whatever. Um, yeah, uh, so thanks, Gigum.